Okay, we're going to make a Flappy Birds clone. I posted on Reddit called Crappier Birds. It's going to be under 50 lines. We're going to make it uh, using processing, uh, so it'll work both on the desktop using Java and in the web browser using JavaScript. This is going to be the processing API's code. Now I'm going to copy these four images, uh, and I've already uploaded these images on Imager, um, courtesy uh, the guy who created the original Crappy Birds. Uh, and just to give you a sense of what these pictures are, uh, I'm going to to create a void setup. This is where processing starts the program. It's similar to the public static void main uh, in Java. Uh, this is going to run in the applet when in Java mode. It's going to run um, in a canvas when in JavaScript mode. Uh, and to actually draw the image, I'm going to do image, back image, uh, and then a position. So uh, if I center the image, image mode center, uh, if I do the back image, let's say width over 2, height over 2, uh, then you should see that the back image looks something like this. It's actually really wide. Uh, it's, I think, 1800 pixels wide. Uh, the bird image uh, is going to be this dude. Okay. Uh, the wall image is pretty unexciting. I actually could have used a rectangle, but it looks like this. Okay. Uh, and the start image uh, is this start screen. And so all of this art uh, is courtesy of the Crappy Birds guy, and so you can look him up. Okay, in this program, we're going to be drawing two different modes. There's going to be a start screen, uh, and then there's going to be a game screen. Uh, and so I'm going to create uh, an int game state equal to 1. Okay, uh, And then in the game's draw loop, this function gets run 60 times a second. Okay times a second, uh, we're going to either be in game state equal to 0, or we're going to a be in game state equal to 1. Okay, So uh, when game state is 1, that's when the, the game starts. I'm going to tr treat 1 as uh, start. Okay, And so we're going to say um, image mode, let's say uh, center, like I have before. And then I could just copy these two lines, actually. Um, and here we go. Uh, and so when we run this program now, this is the start screen. If I set game state to 0, then this is going to be the blank game screen, which we'll have to write in a second. Okay, The actual bird needs to be at a, some position during the game screen, and I'm going to create uh, an int x and y. You can also use floating point numbers, but I'm going to use ints uh, just because that's how I ended up doing it. Uh, also, there's uh, the, the bird actually kind of moves in the center position up and down, uh, and so it does actually move left and right. So um, we only need a velocity in the y-axis. So this pretty much codifies the position of the bird and, and how fast it's moving. Uh, and so we can draw the bird uh, by saying uh, image, bird image, bird image, okay, uh, and at that position. Okay, so now the bird, when we're in the game screen, is going to be drawn right here. Okay, great. Um, another thing to know is we need a background. So I'm going to do uh, image mode corner. Uh, this will draw images according to the top left coordinate in processing. And I'm going to draw the back image. Okay, at I'm going to start doing this. Okay, zero zero, and you'll see uh, the background image looks like this. But I'm actually going to want the background to move. So we're going to give the illusion that the bird is moving by making the background move uh, in the opposite direction. And so I'm going to say, ah, the back image is going to be drawn at the position x. And so the background image is actually going to shift. Okay, I'm also going to draw a second image because you notice that there's some blank space here. So I have to draw two images side by side. Uh, and one of the images is going to be a little bit left of the other image. Okay, so now when x equals negative 200, you'll see that these pictures have been kind of cleverly drawn so that the left side aligns with the right side. Okay, great. Um, next, uh, the bird actually needs to move, and so every frame, what we're going to do is x is going to go left by uh, actually 6. Okay, so um, you're going to get this illusion that the background is moving. Okay, uh, and that, that's, that's handy dandy. And you're going to notice that once we get to the uh, end, uh, the image is going to kind of cut off. Yeah, yeah, see, now now there's no image. Great. Uh, we also want the bird to move, and specifically, let's say the bird had a velocity of, of 1, uh, then it needs to kind of drop down. So um, y plus equals to y. Uh, and so if the velocity is 1, the bird's going to kind of go at a steady 1 pixel velocity down. Actually, we need gravity, so we're going to increase velocity by by 1 each frame as well. Uh, and so now, now the bird just falls like a brick. Okay, great. Actually, so the bird is going to move down at a velocity of uh, increasing by 1. That's acceleration. And whenever you click, it's going to go up with a velocity of negative 17. So I'm going to make a void mouse pressed. 
Okay, this gets run in processing whenever you click the mouse. And then we're going to set the velocity to negative 17 whenever you click. And so now it drops like a brick, but when you click the mouse, it kind of pops up for a second. And so that, excellent. So what's next? Uh, we need the program to actually uh, draw the walls as well. And so we're going to need to store that in some kind of uh, variable structure. And I'm, I'm actually going to create uh, two arrays. Uh, one's going to be called the wall X position, or WX, OK? Um, int array WX. And it can be just two zeros for now, OK? Uh, and two zeros. And then also the Y position of the two walls. And, and w. Why, why two walls? Well, actually, if you've ever played this game, you'll notice that there's only two walls ever drawn on the screen at any time uh, in this version. So uh, we can get away with not using a class, not using uh, you know a larger array structure, because it's actually a fixed number of walls. And then uh, when when one of the walls moves too far to the left, uh, it's just going to wrap around to the right. Okay, and so we're kind of cheating here because uh, it's a fixed uh, amount. Okay, and so we actually need to draw the walls. Uh, and so here we go uh, for i equals zero, i is less than two because there are two of them. Okay, and I'm going to draw the wall image at the wall x and the wall i. Uh, and it's actually going to be uh, two different walls because you know there's two segments, one above and there's one below. So uh, it's going to look like this. Uh, and I've actually memorized that, so uh, you'll you'll see why the this on the right side becomes the case after I draw it. And you can see that ah, uh, I drew it so that we added the height to the lower one, we subtracted the height from the, the top one, and we also shifted it by 100, so there's a space of 200 pixels right here. Okay, great. Um, so this is a 200 pixel space, and that's where the birds can move through. Note that's, that the walls right now are not moving, uh, and so what we need to do is um, the wall, and actually, we'll, yeah, wall x is going to, by default, go down by 6, and so now, just like the bird, uh, the background is going to move left, okay? Um, but also, if, if the wall uh, is past the left, uh, then we need to have it wrap around. So uh, we're going to start a new random y position. I'm going to make it between uh, 200 and height minus 200, so the, the hole is not like off the screen. Uh, and then the x position is going to be just on the right side of the screen. So uh, this is going to have the wall start here, and you can see it moves left, and then you know respawns, and, and there you go. Um, great. OK, and you can see that we actually have two walls, and so sometimes they're overlapping. We actually want the two walls to start at different positions. And so um, let's let's say that we start the game, say, as one start screen. Uh, when we click, we should actually start the game. Uh, and what we do is, if uh, we're at the start screen, uh, then uh, let's put the first wall at 600 uh, and uh, the Y position at height divided by 2. OK. And the second wall should be at, let's say, 900. And the uh, y position of that, let's say, it's 600. OK. Uh, and then the, the bird starts at x equals 0 uh, and uh, y equals height over 2. And, and x here, remember, is the background position. Um, OK. 0. Because I need to set game state equal to 0 right here. OK. And now. The game is starting. I'm lagging a little bit because of my recording software. OK, excellent. So now we would like to have some kind of uh, scoring system by which if you pass the walls, you, you gain some score. And so let's create a uh, int score equals 0. Oh my gosh. Int score equals 0. Uh, and what we're going to do is every time we, you know, our x position is uh, passing one of the walls, then our score is going to go up by 1. Uh, so uh, if uh, the wall position equals where the bird is, uh, then we increase the score by one. Score plus plus. Uh, and we can also keep track of a high score if we want. Uh, an int high score. And the high score would simply be the max of the score and the previous high score. Okay. Uh, and this math max function is part of processing, just like this random function and image function are part of processing. It would be you know math.max in, in standard Java. Okay, uh, and so now uh, we can't actually see the score. That's kind of sad. Uh, so we should text the score somewhere, uh, and I'm going to do it right here. Okay, uh, draw the score 700. Okay, excellent. Uh, and now. 
Yeah, there we go. One, zero, one, two, three. Excellent. Okay. So uh, the score is pretty hard to read. So in the beginning of the program, let's set the font color to zero and the text size to be a bit bigger. Um, now it's going to be visible. Uh, and also we should probably put the high score when we restart the game. So text high score plus high score. Maybe I'll put it at 50 comma width. Okay. Okay, and zero, one. Now we can't lose yet, uh, and that's kind of a disappointment. Uh, and so <laughs> we should work on that next. Also, these walls are a little bit off from where I want them to be. I think I want uh, the walls to be centered on their location. Okay, which is why they're kind of going off the edges. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so finally collisions. Uh, we want to make sure that if the bird goes off the screen or touches the wall, then, then you die. Uh, so if uh, the bird is off the screen, if y is greater than height or y is less than zero, then you die. Also, if the uh, distance between you and the walls is small. So how do we check that? Notice I haven't fixed this thing yet. Uh, we need to say that the distance between the bird, which is width divided by two, and the wall, if that's small, okay, and the distance on the y-axis is also small, okay, uh, then uh, we're going to kill you, game state equals 1. Okay, so this is checking whether the difference between my x positions is less than 25, this is checking whether the difference in y positions is uh, greater than 100. Notice that the y position of the wall is the center point of the wall, uh, and so it's not the actual uh, top position. Okay, um, great. Okay, and now if I touch the wall, I die. If I go off the top, I die. Okay, uh, what other kind of functionality could we possibly do? Let's first fix the wraparound of the uh, background. What we simply need to do is if x is equal to negative 800, uh, then x equals 0. Okay, and that will wrap us around. Okay, so now if we can we can play this game forever. Uh, and excellent. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty terrible at this game, but <laughs> okay, great. I notice that my collisions are a little bit off. So I probably need to put an image mode center above this or move this down here. Uh, that will put the bird a little bit closer to where it actually is. I'm going to post this video uh, on YouTube and then you're going to get the source code underneath so go ahead and copy paste it. It's released under Creative Commons license. Um, yeah, okay, check out some of my other videos uh, for 2048 uh, and Snake and all those games uh, and also uh, check out the Katie Byte website uh, for some Java tutorials and uh, how to uh, start programming in processing. Um, there's a free textbook and also there are a lot of practice problems that you can use. Okay, finally I need to kind of uphold my promise, which is to make this thing less than 50 lines. Um, there are a bunch of different optimizations you can do if this were like a tiny code competition. First of all, all of these uh, could be declared on one line, and you know, if this were tiny code, you would be making these variable names one letter long. Okay, uh, you can actually do the C style variable uh, declaration for arrays, which means you can inline it with this thing. Uh, and similarly here, you can C style the array declaration. Uh, that's something you can do in both processing Java and JavaScript. Um, okay, um, now this program is 57 lines. You'll notice that here we have x equals zero, game state equals zero. So x equals game state equals zero. Also, we should probably set the score equal to zero. Okay. Uh, and also you should note that the y equals this as well, so we can chain these equalities. Okay. Uh, you can see that this is a one-liner, so we can stick it at the end. Okay. Um, you can see that this could be changed into plus plus score, and therefore inlined here. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of other optimizations you could do, but let's see if we're already at our target 50. Yeah, we're already there. So um, the one I posted on Reddit was 20 lines or less than 20 lines. Uh, you can check out that post as well. Okay, take care guys. Bye.